Live from New York, it's theCUBE. Covering Inforum 2016, brought to you by Inform. Now, here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and George Gilbert. Welcome back to day two, everybody. Day two of the Inforum 2016 conference. We're here at the Javits Center. The deal architect is here, Vinny Mercendani. Uh, George and I are really pleased to have Vinny on. Vinny, it's always great to see you. You know, author of many, many books, The New Polymath, uh, SAP Nation, the, the New Tech Elite. Congratulations, you're cranking these things out like crazy. It's always a pleasure, good to see you. Uh, same here, David. I seem to come here every time I have a new book, so <laughs> thank you for having me, and George, great to see you again. And I, I just got to say, on the, the title of the book, of, I'm not sure if it was the most recent one, I'm a few behind, but The Deal Architect is, sounds like you co-authored it with Donald Trump, so it's going to be the <laughs> best-selling business <laughs> book of all time, ahead even uh, of the Bible. I don't want to touch that. Yeah, so <laughs> make a deal. So tell us about the new book. What's the title, what's it about, what's the premise? Yeah, so, Dave, it is called Silicon Collar. So, oh, sorry, Silicon? Collar. Collar, okay. My premise is, we're no longer blue collar, white collar, brown collar workers, we're all silicon collar workers because technology is becoming an integral part of our jobs. So the book has three themes. One is, I interviewed about 50 different organizations, and I'll come back to that in a minute, about how the nature of the job is changing in their, in their businesses, right? Very optimistic, uh, I'll talk about that a little bit. The second part of the book is about all the pessimism around machines taking over jobs, you know, kind of the dystopian view of jobless futures. And the third is on, we keep blaming machines. Us humans have screwed up the labor economy quite a bit. So I analyze the labor economy, some of the trillions in student debt, on the other hand, aging workers without enough pensions. There's a lot of issues with the labor economy that have nothing to do with machines. Us humans have done a great job screwing it up. But let me talk about the first part, the really exciting part of the book was, I interviewed everyone from the Golden State Warriors to how the job of the basketball player and the coach is changing with all the new data and all the new wearable skins they have and so on, to BP on how they're using robotic crawlers in their, in their rigs and drones in their remote pipeline monitoring to KPMG in terms of how the ac public accounting job is changing, to an advertising agency here in New York on how you know, digital is changing the nature of advertising, to shop floor, f I mean there are 50, I, I, I touched on so, every industry in, in, in doing the research. So, so Kevin Durant obviously has a silicon collar on, on right, coming to the, all the Golden State they Warriors. <laughs> but um, haven't, Vinny, haven't machines always replaced humans, physical labor, you know, automation. Um, what's new about that? So, so you know, the I, I call it the three Ds. If it's dull, dirty, or dangerous a task, as a society we want that to be automated. We want workers to keep evolving into more creative, you know, more innovative stuff. That's been happening, like you say, for a long, long time. Problem is, some of us cling to those three D jobs rather than saying, hey, this is going to be replaced, and you know, so a little bit of a transition. What's the issue. third D? Dull, dirty, and dangerous. Dangerous. Uh, okay. Um, the 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 other thing is, we because the rate of technology is growing so fast, we've gotten into this very pessimistic mood that oh my God, machine learning is evolving so quickly, and and drones are evolving so quickly, they're going to replace us all. And that's where I had to do my historical analysis. I went and looked at the grocery business. I looked at UPC cords. UPC cords were patented in 1952. They didn't get commercialized till 75. When they got commercialized, they didn't kill grocery jobs. They made inventory control better. So actually increased the number of SKUs and increased the number of grocery jobs. I went back and looked at the automobile industry, how that's evolved. Machines have been taken over in driving since 1958. Chrysler introduced cruise control in 1958. LiDAR has been available for Mitsubishi since 1992, right? DARPA had driverless cars competition in 2004. So they've been evolving for a while, and what I find over and over again is we tend to react, oh my God, it's coming now, and it takes 15, 20, 50 years for automation to really dramatically impact jobs. So I know, George, you want to jump in, but people would say, but Vinny, for the first time now, machines are replacing humans in cognitive 
tasks. And that's where you get a lot of the fear about people losing their jobs, whether it's you know, dealing with a kiosk at the, sure. the, 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 the airline, or you know, billboards now are all automated. All these cognitive tasks are now being replaced. Self-driving well, so, cars so. you talk about. And, and they'll argue that the, there's this dumbbell effect of the middle class getting hollowed out. The, the super wealthy, guys like us, are doing, <laughs> doing really well. And then the, the guys doing you know, low level jobs are doing okay, and the middle's getting hollowed out. Not, why not, you, not, not what my research shows. So, tell, so what does your research show and why do you remain optimistic? Well, so you, let's take the cognitive part, right? Mm -hmm. AI, artificial intelligence, and now machine learning, deep learning, whatever you want to call it has been evolving since the Turing test in 1950. Every five years we come along and say, oh, machines have finally gone across the Turing test. Now we're talking about Amazon Echo being finally there. It's not, it's not, right? So us technologists tend to hype up stuff a little bit sooner than we should, that's one. I, I have a chapter called Circuit Breakers to Over, over Automation. And one of the circuit breakers is technology hype cycle. We tend to overhype stuff. You know, Elon Musk says you should be able to summon a car from New York to California in two years. Well, it's not just the technology. He doesn't take into account that our lane markets are consistent, our laws haven't evolved. It's going to take decades for that to be possible, right? So we tend to overhype, that's one. Second thing we don't factor is incumbent interests don't exactly roll over. The accounting firms, for example, that particular sector, they could have automated a long time ago. The business model is predicated on younger workers, pyramids and so on. They're not about to change just because automation makes sense, right? You've got um, bell curves of adoption, which, you know, if you, look at, if you look at Jeffrey Moore's crossing the chasm, every one of us technologies focuses on crossing the chasm, but that's on the left side of the bell curve. The right side of the bell curve takes decades to, to evolve. So I've looked at a number of industries where, you know, the data that I've found is, sh is, is shocking because you, you look at e-books. You know, we would have said 30 years ago, everyone would be buying, phys uh, would be buying e-books. 70% of books are still physical. Mm. George. Manual transmission, manual transmission. 47% of the cars sold around the world are still <laughs> manual transmission. <laughs> you know, Even though none of our kids know how to drive a standard. I was going to say, some, <laughs> no. some of us like them and so, special order them. So George, we're up against the clock, so yeah. jump in. I know you want to talk a little bit about the software business. And I did, since Vinny is a, I think the, the, the term is eminence grease, like a <laughs> wise old man of the, of the business. Hey, who are you calling old? <laughs> 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 Touche. Um, <laughs> So we, we go back to the era when you know P, uh, PeopleSoft and SAP were the dialogue. Now you're showing your age. Yeah, <laughs> I know. But um, the the transition. So so PeopleSoft got absorbed into the Borg. SAP started uh, a rewrite to for for configurability by design that sort of conflicted with the need for cloud delivery and low cost. Then they did the in-memory database and now are doing a rewrite ground up, and they're starting apparently from the core of the financials and moving out. Why are they having difficulty? Well, can we talk about Infor first? Since, oh, since we're here? Absolutely, uh, yeah, sorry. Let me, you know, there are three or four things that Infor is doing that is very different from the other ERP players, which I really like. One is, I've been saying for a while, you know, ERP has been very, very manufacturing centric. There's a lot of other industries, utilities, services, uh, banking, and so on, that have similar needs. So Infor is probably the most assertive in terms of verticalizing. If you look at, you know, they have a retail offering, they have a healthcare offering, they have a hospitality offering. So it's good to see them lead into different verticals. The second thing they've done differently is, even though they're moving to the cloud, they made a very smart decision to say, why compete with Amazon for infrastructure? Why am I investing in infrastructure? You know, Charles uh, a couple of years ago said, I heard him say, Friends don't let friends build data centers, right? Um, a, 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 a third thing, a third thing that- I guess he and Larry aren't good friends anymore. The <laughs> uh, third thing that Infor has done differently is they're not afraid to invest in services. You know, so they have a digital agency called Hook and Loop. Loop. They have a set of data scientists in, in Cambridge. They're not afraid to invest in data. A lot of other software vendors will go, even though they have people, they tend to be a little wary about talking about it. Infor has been fairly open about saying, people are important in the overall equation. 
A little so different I, than you, you're used to. Vinny, I'm sorry, the trains are backing up, we got to jump, but uh, thanks so much for stopping Absolutely. by. Absolutely. Sharing Absolutely. with Thank us you. your new book, and congratulations. Thank you. And good luck with it. All right, always oh, a pleasure. Sorry. All right, keep right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guests right after this short break.